1 Corinthians chapter number 15. We're going to start reading down in verse number 51. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal should have put on immortality, then shall be, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for the singing. Lord, we're just thankful to be in your house this morning, Lord. We're thankful for everything you've done for us. Lord, thankful for those that have put so much into this week, Lord, uh, for us to be able to come to your house this morning, Lord, and just worship you, Lord, not have to worry about if the bathrooms are clean or if the floor's been swept, Lord, that we can just come in and truly uh, worship you, Lord. We just ask you to be what laid upon my heart. Help me convey it here to your people the way you gave it to me, Lord. If there be anybody here that's lost, Lord, help them see their need for salvation before it's everlasting too late. Lord, help each and every one of us so we'll be able to walk out of here this morning closer to you than we was when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first thing I want to look at by way of introduction is we see strictly in verse number 51, uh, we see the mystery that he talks about. He says, Behold, I will show you a mystery. Why does he say mystery? Well, to them, uh, this wasn't talked about necessarily in the Old Testament. To them, it might have been a mystery. To us, it is not. Uh, we know and we have the Bible. We know what's about to transpire at any time now. Uh, we can look and we know uh, how the Bible lines up and everything is taking place uh, for the Lord to call His church out of here. So for us, it might not be a mystery except for the fact that we don't know when. Uh, and that's what we'll get to in a, a little bit later. Uh, we don't know when the Lord's coming, Brother Phil. We just know it's going to take place. And when it's going to take place is in just a moment that it talks about in verse number 52. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Can I say it's amazing the people that, that do not want to believe that just think that they have time. We don't have time. When that moment happens, it talks about, Brother Donald, in the twinkling of an eye. We're going up out of here. There's not going to be, you're not going to have time to say, well, you know what, I used to, I, I went to church and maybe I didn't get saved and now I need to. No, when that happens, it's done. It's over. You know, your, your chance that you had to be saved the way you can be now is therefore gone. It's going to happen that quick, just as fast as you can have a twinkle in your eye, it's going to be over. Lord, how we look forward to that day. Why is it going to happen? Because this mortal has to put on immortality. This mortal that it talks about uh, there in the next few verses, for the corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. Why? Because we're going to a place where we never die. We're going to the place that we will live forever for Him. And if you can't get it, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to call Him out, but if you can't get excited over that, like Brother Phil just did, what are you going to get excited over? What are you going to get excited over if you can't get excited over the fact that we're headed to heaven, a place where we're never going to die, a place we're not going to have to deal with all the junk that we deal with here, and a place that we should look forward to and strive and pray that God will come and take us back at any point in time. So we see the mortal, but when we see the missing in verse number 55, and I found this, I always find this interesting. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Now, we know that, that the fact of when we're called up out of here, if we're still here and, and the church gets raptured out, we're not going to have to taste death. But we have seen enough people that have passed away, even just in Emmanuel Baptist Church over the time, to know that saved people just die different, Brother Ray. You know, that you, just, you see that calm and that peace about them, that they just don't have those same uh, um, reservations about death that a lost person will. You know, we went down to uh, Dry Ridge at church down, I think it was last summer, uh, they was having revival or camp uh, revival down there, went down there that one night, and that preacher, Brother Ron, was preaching. He was talking about a different people that he has dealt with on their deathbed over the years of people who are not saved. And talking about those people screaming out, talking about their legs being on fire, screaming out, talking about the things that they are about to go into, about the things that they are faced with because of that sting of death that they are going through. 
because of where they are about to spend eternity. Can I tell you, friend, there is a difference. There is a difference. I can only go by what, what I have experienced in my life. And I, I just, I can remember, and I don't know, you know, if, you know, my sister is here, and this might make her cry, but I don't know if she's ever heard the story. I'm sure she has. I've told it over to jail before. I remember the last day that my mom went into the hospital. I remember that Tuesday, if I'm remembering correctly, us and Miss Dawn and them, we were supposed to go to Kings Island that day. I remember everything that happened that day. And I remember going to the hospital that day, and I can remember my mom hadn't said anything that morning hardly at all, and I remember standing on this side of the bed, and if I have the order correctly, my aunt was standing on that side of the bed, and this is just what I remember was in the room, and the nurse standing at that end of the bed. I remember telling my mom, they can give you medicine for your pain. They can, they can try to help you with your pain. But if they do that, they've got to quit giving you the medicine that's keeping your blood pressure up, whatever it was. And if they do that, they don't know what's going to happen. You can walk out of here today, or you could die the next second. Right. I'll never forget my mom looking at me. I know where I'm going, and it'll be okay. See, when you are saved, when you have that, you're not worried about that sting of death. You know you're about to cross over into eternity and spend eternity with uh, the Lord in heaven. It, it has just a different feel. We can think, I can think of other people we've had in the church that, that maybe have had cancer and those things, and you go to try to be a blessing to them, and that what's always said, they end up being a blessing back. Because they just don't have that fear of death anymore. It's missing, so to speak. But not only do we see the missing, we see how much appreciation do we have in verse number 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How much appreciation do you have for that victory that it gives you this morning? I'm afraid too many times we go through life and, and we just kind of just roll along with the punches, so to speak, and we don't take time to truly appreciate what we have to look forward to. What we have to look forward to in heaven. But in that much appreciation brings me to kind of where this thought all came from. The motivation found in verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. How motivated are you to do anything for the Lord? Anything for Him. Whether it be tell your neighbor, whether it be tell your family members, whether, whatever it may be, whether it just be to uh, teach a class, whether it be to mow the yard, clean the bathrooms, whatever it may be. And that's what got me to thinking about the fact of those of us in church, we know how the Bible lines up that nothing else has to take place for the Lord to call us out of here. It could happen like that. We could go home to be with him today from this very service in the next moment. Nothing has to happen for that to take place besides he just calls us out of here. And we know with everything going on in the world, we would probably love for that to happen, Brother Phil, at any point in time because of the nonsense going on. And it might happen today, and it might not. It might happen in 24, and it might not. So I want to preach with this thought in mind. 2024, what if? Can I say first, 2024, what if he puts something in your life unexpected? What if something happens in your life in 2024 that you didn't expect to happen? What if you walk in on the second week of 2024 and all of a sudden your boss tells you that they're downsizing and you no longer have a job? What if you were like our pastor and you've probably at this point in time of the year, I don't know when everything happened, maybe you've gone through tests or having some issues and all of a sudden on Valentine's Day your spouse has to tell you that you have cancer. What happens in 2024 when you get that unexpected news of whatever it may be? Can I say just based on the law of averages, Somebody in here will go through something unexpected in 2024. We'll have loss of income. We'll have loss of health. You might lose a loved one. It, 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 heaven forbid you could have to lose a child. Now, I'm not trying to jinx anything, but just law of averages, this many people, something bad is going to happen to somebody in here in 2024. Where does your peace come from? Where does your peace come from? How close to him are you truly? The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter number 4, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I tell them over to jail. This is just strictly, this is my opinion, Brother Adrian. The greatest thing about being saved is the fact that I will get to go to heaven. I don't have to spend eternity in hell. For me personally, the second greatest thing about that is the peace that God gives. God's got it. It'll be okay. I don't understand it sometimes, Brother Clint. I don't have to explain it. I don't know how. I just have faith and trust that he's got it under control. He, he's going to take care of whatever it is. And it's that peace that can get us through anything. How close to him are you today? Do you have that peace? 
You have that peace that you know that whatever happens, that if, if I go into work on January 2nd, if you're off tomorrow, whatever it may be, and my boss tells me I don't have a job or whatever it may be, do you have that peace that know that it'll be okay? It'll be all right. What if something bad happens in your life in 2024? What if that unexpected turn happens? Can I say one of us will deal with one of these things in 2024? We don't know who it will be, but something will happen. Can I say this? I'm up here just try to break up the, uh, to try to calm down the nerves a little bit. So we was driving this morning. We were going to jail because I'm starting to get hot, and I keep debating on if I'm going to take my jacket out. That's going to cause me to have to take the mic out and all that kind of stuff. But we're driving to jail this morning, and Miss Tina asked me what I was preaching on. And so I told her, and, and she said something else about preaching, you know, just trying to give you just a little, you know, critique on things, and then Bella gave me a critique. She told me I needed to scream. I needed to get louder like Brother Doug did, she told me, Brother Phil. So, so I'm not sure if I'm getting loud enough yet or not. Maybe I am because I'm starting to get hot up here. Can I say, first off, what happens in 2024? What if he puts something in your life unexpected? Can I say, second, what if the blessings slow down? Can I say, our pastor sent me a video this week. Most of you know Brother Jeremy Scott that had come and had ordered the van that he had so he could drive around. He got his van this week. Well, actually, I think he got it. I, I believe the video said the night, so I guess it was a couple weeks ago. But our pastor sent me the video this week. Fifteen months, Brother Ray, he waited on that van. And in texting him back and telling him uh, how long it had been, our pastor texted back and said, we are so spoiled here in the United States. And boy, are we a spoiled people. What happens if those blessings slow down in 2024? What happens if that raise that you get every April or every May or every January or whatever, what happens if that raise don't come this year? What happens if you look at your job and your company, Brother Brian, you're like, they're still making millions of dollars, but all of a sudden they can't afford to give me a dollar an hour raise? What happens if, if all the prices go up again? We was talking, it's crazy, we were talking the other day about some things, and we are such a blessed people, we don't give it a second thought. We go to the grocery store, we buy what we want, Brother Donald, we take it home, we, we don't give it a second thought because we can still afford everything. But when you sit down and start looking at things, so there's a few things. Number one, my, uh, my sister sent us a picture, I believe it was last week, that I guess Kroger had uh, 12 packs of drinks on sale, buy two, get three free. And she sent a thing that she got some, so we went and bought some. So we figured it up, and I don't remember what it was. It ended up being like 7 or $8 for like a case of 24 is what it averaged out to be. I say that because I remember we used to buy the case of 24 for like 4 or 5 bucks. you know? We used, uh, Miss Tina, she loves to drink coffee, and use distilled water in the coffee maker, and you go buy a gallon of that, and it's like $1.40 a gallon. I remember it was like 80 cents. You know, we, if you know anything about us at our house, Bella loves pizza. So every Wednesday is Pizza Wednesday for the most part. That's just, that's the way it's been for I don't know how long, because that's the easiest thing to do. We make up a pizza, we can eat it, it's right there for Tina to warm up and she gets off work or whatever. So we would get the three pack of DiGiorno's from, from Sam's. Well, those DiGiorno pizzas were on sale at, at Kroger this week for $5 a piece. I was like, well, let's see what they are at Sam's, because it still might be cheaper to get three pack of Sam's. Well, three pack of Sam's is like 16 some dollars and something. I remember them like 10 bucks. What happens if those prices just continually go up? What happens? Now, for you sitting here on the front row, you don't care. Mom and dad are still going to just give you food or whatever. But for those of us that have to pay for those things, what if those blessings do start to slow down? Are we still going to worship him? Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15 tells us what? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day who you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Right. Well, Brother Josh, I'm still going to serve the Lord, are you? What happens if times get a little bit tough? What happens if all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're starting to really pinch pennies, so to speak? Are you going to start volunteering for that time to work? Well, you know, I have to work on Sunday. That's how, the only way I'm going to make ends meet. I'm going to have to start working on Wednesday nights and doing this. And do that. That's the only way I'm going to make ends meet. I, I can't give the Lord. Look, I, I know we've always tried to tithe, but, you know, I, I need some of that extra now because gas is going up, Brother Ron. I just, I don't have it anymore. Are we still serving the Lord then? Or have we all of a sudden started to cut corners because we think we need to? What happens if those prices go, continue to go up? What happens if all those blessings just start slowing down of what we have seen? We have just been, and that'll be the next thing, that we have just been showered with here in America. Amen. Leads me to point number three. 
What if those blessings be, keep coming? Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse number 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And it will cause the shower to come down in this season. There shall be showers of blessing. Can I say that is exactly where we are at? We are showered with blessings on a daily basis. If we truly want, you want to look at the way the rest of the world lives. Don't look at, don't look at the, the Smiths next door or whatever, or whatever you want to compare yourself to, keeping up with the Joneses. Compare yourself to the rest of the world and we are showered with blessings on a daily basis. We get to come and sit here this morning in a beautiful church house. We're not worried about if it was cold outside, if it was raining outside. We got heat, we got air. You can just about in here sit on one side of the building and be one or the other. We are blessed beyond what we can conceivably think of. What happens if those keep coming? Are you going to still serve him? Right. It's easy and it's amazing how complacent we get because we are so blessed. We've heard it preached on before and, and, and I still try to think for myself. Still just trying to convict myself when our pastor preached that message. If you only had today what you were thankful for yesterday, what would you have? Because, see, we just take it for granted. We just go through the motions. We just take it for granted that God's just going to continually be good to us. I'm continually going to go get in my car every morning. It's going to start. I'm continually going to get to come down to the house of God, and the preacher's going to give me something. I'm continually going to be able to go to my job and get my paycheck, and, and we just take it for granted. What if those continue to come? Are you going to be more thankful? I thought about this this morning, was thinking about, you know, I don't know, how the other preachers in here are, but for me personally, you know, you, you have a thought that God gives you and you preach it to yourself about a hundred times a day. And I'm thankful that I have a job that I get to do that. My job isn't super hard, so it, it, it'll run through my mind a hundred times a day. And I was thinking about this this morning. We would never look at somebody and say that this was the right way. If somebody's done us wrong and we look at somebody and say, well, I'll forgive them, but I don't have to like them. We would say, well, then you're probably really not forgiving them then. We would never look at that if we were telling somebody, say, well, that's not a biblical way to, to, to forgive somebody. Well, what about in how thankful we are? Oh, I thank God every day for what he's done for me. Do you? Do you really thank him for it? Do you really truly thank him for it? Not just a, well, I'm supposed to thank God. God, thank you for everything you've done for me today. Amen. Is that, is that how you thank him? I would think he's done a little bit more for us to be entitled to something a little bit more than just a simple, Lord, thank you for everything you've done. Amen. He's been way, way too good to each and every one of us. Way better than what we deserve for us to be way more thankful. What if those blessings keep coming? Are you going to continue to worship him and be thankful? Or is that why he'll have to dry those up possibly because we're not thankful? Last two points. This is where this all came about. This is where in, in, in this whole chapter right here and in in what I was when I was reading this and what I kind of got to thinking about and, and talking about continually uh, serving him and, and doing and working for him is the last two points right here. Can I say first off, what if he don't return this year? Can I say all of us, I believe, if you're in here this morning and you're saved and, and you believe in the Lord and, and you go to church faithfully, I believe you're at a spot in time you're like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. Like, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. I just don't know how much more of this nonsense I can deal with. You know, I can't even turn on, can't even watch a commercial on TV without dealing with some of the junk that goes on in the world. What if he don't come? Are you going to continue to work? Are you going to continue to do something for him? Or are we just going to continue to sit back and rest on our laurels? Can I say it is amazing to me, this is just my observance i don't know which one to say but how often we can just easily we could just come in and sit back amen wonderful preacher and get up and walk out and never change right. never do anything we've gotten into that point in our life that it, we we just want him to come back so bad we've just become complacent that we just go through the motions service after service after service sure. What if he don't return this year? Do we think that we've done everything that we can do? Hey, look, I've done told my family as many times I can tell them. I've invited them to church as many times I can invite them. I've done everything that I could possibly do to get them to do this or my coworkers. And so, Lord, I just need you to come back. But what if he don't come back? There's still things to be done. 
Can I say we have a, I just mentioned there's a whole uh, group of ornaments back there to take to pray for people, for Christ, for the Caribbean. Can I say that's going to continually get bigger and bigger as we try to do more and more in Christ for the Caribbean? Right. Have you asked how you can help in that? Our pastor alluded to it on Wednesday night. If he wasn't here, you'll have to ask him about it uh, any more in detail over what I'm going to give. But he talked on Wednesday night, I believe he mentioned it last Sunday as well, talking about starting up the Bible college. Yeah. You know, we're going to have to have people help in that. Right. Somebody's going to have to make sure they're here to live stream those things. What if Brother Aaron can't be here? What if it's a, a night that I can't be here or somebody else? What have you, are you doing anything to be able to put forth any more effort to do anything else for him? What if he don't return this year? Are you going to continue to work and try to do something? Are you going to follow what the Lord wants to do or just continue to sit on our hands and say, eh, they got this. Pastor will handle this. Whoever will handle this. Somebody else will take care of it. I'm good. I'm saved. My family's saved. I've done all I can do. And, you know, if God don't come back, I'm just going to stay right here and just go through the motions. That tells me we're weary in well-doing. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. It's not the time to stop now. No. Now's the time. You see what's going on in the world. Now's the time we need to be fighting even more. Sure. Now's the time. Look, I, our pastor has mentioned it. I would love to. I've had multiple people come up to me and talk about putting tracks together and putting bags together for visitation. And we got a bunch back there now and, and all these things going out. What Are we doing anything to put our best foot forward to go even more? Why do we have to only go Monday nights? What if Thursday night works best for you? When was the last time you had said, hey, Brother Josh, we would like to get a group to go on Thursday night or Tuesday night or Friday night. I don't know. Go Wednesday night during church. No, I'm just kidding about that. Don't do that. Saturday morning. Maybe you got a morning. Maybe you have a, We used to go on Friday mornings. I remember a time when I worked different shift, and that's when you would go. We used to go on Friday mornings. What about a morning one? Hey, Brother Josh, we got a group wants to go to go. I can give you note cards. I can pass out note cards and give you and tell you where to go. It'd be a blessing to see more and more people go. It would... For, for me, just me personally, it would be a blessing to have more people go and break up everybody on Monday night a little bit. That way I wouldn't have to, it's amazing to me. This is just me. I don't have any note cards. I thought I might have some in there. It's amazing to me. We get out here on Monday nights and you say, okay, we got 30 of us here. It's an absolute blessing, Brother Adrian, but who wants to drive? Because we're only getting about 15 or 16 in that van. If we get enough kids, we can get 17 or 18. They sit on top of each other, lay them down on the floorboard and all kinds of stuff. I didn't say that out loud, did I? But then everybody just looks at you. Uh, I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive. Well, if we had people break up, everybody say, hey, I'll go this night, we can go this night, and all of a sudden, everybody can just take the church bus each time out. What are you going to do if he don't come back? Amen. What if 2024 he don't come back? Now's not the time for us to just continue to sit on our hands and do nothing. Now's the time for us that we should be putting our best foot forward, doing everything we can to get the gospel out. Can I tell you the world's doing everything they can to get their nonsense out? Can I tell you, false churches are doing everything they can to get their falseness out. What are we doing to get the truth out? What are we truly doing to get the gospel out? Let me say this lastly. Hopefully, if you've been following along, you probably know where this is. What if he does return this year? Can I say this, the first, the, the first little sub-point of this or whatever that I thought about? I know I'm not trying to be funny. Would you even notice? Would you even notice if he came back? Now, if you're saved, obviously you are. You're going out of here. Obviously you are. I get that. But we even, do we even notice what's going on around us? Yeah. Amen. Do we even have any idea of what's going on around us? Would we even... What, the people that... that you, like, I, like I said, this is weird. This is just the way my brain works. I understand if we're saved, we're going to be out of here. But what if you were the... And everybody's going like this. Don't get me wrong. We're all going in the twinkling of an eye. But what if you was the last one to go? Would you notice? Do we even look up enough to take notice of what's going on around us? What if he does come back this year? Are you ready? I'm not talking about are you saved. I'm talking about are you ready? He calls us out of here this year in 2024. Will you hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? When you have to stand before him, we're all going to stand before him. Will you hear, well done? What if he comes back Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock? What's he going to find you doing? Yeah. Are you ready? Can we look at our life and say it doesn't matter when he comes back, he's not going to find me doing anything that I'm not supposed to be doing? Or do we really need him to come back on a Sunday or Wednesday? 
Preferably maybe even a Sunday morning because Sunday night I'm probably not going to be at church either. That went over real well, didn't it, Brother Ray? What's he going to find you doing? Are you ready? Can I say if you're not saved, you're not ready. He could come back in 2024. He very easily could come back in 2023. We still have whatever it is, a little over 12 hours now. See, it's almost noon. I'll get you out of here early time. You better get a good nap in. I don't want nobody falling asleep on any preaching tonight. Can I say, if you can't go back, Brother Phil talked about this this morning. He's uh, uh, joking about the lady he was talking to, and that lady he was talking about that he talked to on the plane, and, and she was talking about different things, and he said, if you can't go back to that time and place where you know you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you're not ready. I'm not talking about what grandma or grandpa believes, what mom and dad believe. I'm not talking about what anybody else believes. I'm talking about what you believe. If you can't go back to that time and place where you know you got saved, you're not ready. Can I say, I can go back to a time and place that I remember raising my hand. I don't think I've told this in a while, so we'll tell this. There might be some new people here who ain't heard it. I was probably 14, 15 years old. I don't remember what year it was, but I remember them asking on a Wednesday night. I remember sitting downstairs at church. I could tell you where I was at, take you to church, everything right now, and asking who wanted to go to heaven, and I raised my hand. I knew I'd been in church well enough to know that I wanted to go to heaven, Brother Ron. I didn't want to go to hell. That following Sunday, I was baptized. I lived my life as if I was saved, was in church, out of church, off and on for, for the rest of all the way up till I did get saved. We came to Emmanuel Baptist Church in 2001. We wasn't at Emmanuel Baptist Church very long, and I remember walking out of one of the services and God saying, you're lost, you're going to die and go to hell, Brother Adrian. It's like, no, I'm not. Remember, I got baptized. I've been raising my hand. I was good. I had that argument with myself for years and years and years. If you, those of you that have been here long enough to know, I taught Sunday school. I, I would teach the kids on Sunday nights. I even surrendered to preach. I was going to the jail, doing all those things a good Christian is supposed to be, except I wasn't a Christian. And I think it was around August or September, I think, in 2011, we were supposed to go to, um, supposed to, or sometime around there, anyway, we were supposed to go up to Indiana, to where I was supposed to go. That's me running from God. Problem is, God is still in Indiana. Even though they drive all the way from over here, he is still in Indiana. And I remember that preacher that day, teaching in Sunday school. He's like, look, you can be a good person this side of eternity, and you can be a good person that side of eternity. But if you can't go back to that time and place that you know you trusted Christ your Savior, you'll be that good person spend it in hell. Something to that effect. For lack of what knowing the right thing to say, you might as well hit me upside the head with a shovel. I felt he was talking to me. That was on a Sunday. I went home that Sunday afternoon, sat in bed all afternoon, felt sorry for myself, whatever. In November 7, 2011, I woke up somewhere along the lines in the middle of the night, and me and Miss Tina was talking, and she's like, well, you know what you got to do, and I can take you to, we still got the same recliner sitting in our bedroom in the same exact spot, got down on my knees and asked God to save me. I can go back to that time and place where I know I trusted him. Not where I raised my hand, not where I got baptized, where I know I put my faith and trust in him about 3 o'clock in the morning, November 7, 2011. If you can't go back to that time and place, you're not ready. Right. Plain and simple. There's no sugarcoating it. There's no, no way around it. There's no, well, but I, I do this or I did that. No, there's, if you can't go back to that time and place, you're not ready. Right. I'll answer the question for you. If he does return this year, are you ready? Safe person, are you ready to meet him? Lost person, I can tell you right now, you're not. Right. You don't want him to come back, but he can. We've alluded to it. I've alluded to it several times. There's nothing that's keeping him from coming back before the next moment. Amen. And if you can't go back to that time and place you trusted him, you need to get ready. Because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. What was the very first thing we said? The very first thing we said. What if something in your life happens unexpected? Can I tell you there's, there, there are plenty of people and things that are going on. You know, you just look at in, just uh, around in the Florence area. Just in the Florence or Boone County area in the last, what has it been? Whatever day it snowed. It was that last Monday, so it, we know, no, last Monday was Christmas. So I guess in the last two weeks, how many people have been killed in automobile accidents? There was two one night in the interstate within an hour of each other. That all happened about half an hour, 45 minutes after Miss Tina went through that same area. 
Can I say there was one that was just, what, a good golf drive away from right here at the steps of our church last Wednesday night that happened about two minutes after we went through that area? Can I say there was another one in Florence at some point this week at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning somebody else got hit by a vehicle? That, there's nothing keeping that from being you, friend. Nothing. There's nothing saying that that can't be you. I don't know any of those people. I don't know. Hopefully that any, all of them were saved. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed of making it home today. Are you ready? He can come back in 2024. There is absolutely nothing that has to take place in this Bible that's keeping him from coming back the next moment. And if you can't go back to that time and place where you trusted him, you're not ready. And you're not guaranteed another opportunity. You don't know what your life faces, what you might face in your life in 2024. I suggest you get ready this morning. I'm asking Brother Clint and Brother Daniel come pick out a song of invitation. What if 2024? Are you where you need to be, saved person, that if something unexpected happens in your life, it could be something unexpected happens in your life just because your faith needs to shine through. Do you have your faith where it needs to be? Lost person, if he does come back in 2024, I'll answer the question for you. You are not ready. You need to get ready this morning, and you can get ready this morning. If you can't go back to that time and place, you come. We'll take the Bible and show you what it means to be saved, and you can be saved before it's everlasting too late. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we're thankful for your word, thankful for the scriptures. Lord, we're thankful just everything you've done for us. Lord, we just ask you to speak to hearts now during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.